For about as long as civilization has been a thing, people have enjoyed getting off their collective face. In ancient India, early Hindus would drink Soma, the master of plants, which modern chemists believe would get you absolutely spangled. The ancient Greeks used to drink mouldy wheat liquid that was surprisingly similar to LSD, and the ancient Chinese were sticking obscene amounts of cannabis in their tea as early as 2737 BCE. Maddeningly, archaeological evidence suggests that even the Neanderthals were getting in on the herb abuse. Now these psychedelics were used for a variety of purposes, spanning medicine, religion and recreation. But if there's one conclusion we can draw from the widespread historical use of psychedelics, it's that human beings have never shied away from hallucinatory experiences, or as I like to refer to it, getting rat assed on the trippers. So what better way to investigate the world of psychedelics than being in that world, is in me taking a little trip to Amsterdam and fumbling my way through this episode whilst melting on truffles like a confused child. Well, unfortunately, considering restrictions of budget, health and safety, and social media's nanny state community guidelines, I've been told I can't do that, which got me thinking, how could I hallucinate without drugs? As it turns out, there are a few ways to at least partially emulate the effects of psychedelics without swallowing anything. Surprisingly, one of these methods involves chewing on extremely hot chilli peppers. Now when I say hot, I do sincerely mean hot. A pepper's heat is rated in Scoville units, and where a jalapeno sits at 8000 on this scale, the world's hottest, the Carolina Reaper, comes in at a healthy 2 million, and can cause hallucinations due to the body releasing a huge amount of endorphins to combat the pain. Now of course it goes without saying that any old baby can eat one Carolina Reaper, so I thought I'd try two. Oh God. Now one thing to remember about psychedelic experiences is that they're not always pleasant. <sighs> and sometimes this is deliberate. Just take South American ayahuasca ceremonies. These rituals are shamanic in nature, with the hallucinogenic brew consumed for the purpose of psychological healing, mystical insight and spiritual revelations. revelations. <sighs> However, it also makes you poo and vomit a lot, an experience known as purging that, while symbolic of the release of negative energy, is apparently pretty horrible when it's happening to you. Oh, it's paid a bit of oh George, help me man! Quickly, I'm begging you. Open it! Oh, just open it man. <laughs> oh, oh no, I didn't bring this food. And this is what separates psychedelic drugs from other recreational drugs. The, exper uh, the experience isn't always enjoyable. Rather, they can be used as a tool for personal growth, which is also what I'm experiencing now. The use of psychedelics as a spiritual tool stretches far and wide across humanity. Admittedly, it's been less commonplace in the West, but this itself has been a subject of mockery. In the late 1800s, Native American Kwana Parker said the white man goes into his church house and talks about Jesus. The Indian goes into his teepee and talks to Jesus. And when you think about it, this spiritual use of psychedelics makes sense. Most religions are predicated on some sort of communication or understanding of another unseen world, and psychedelics have often been utilised to alter people's perceptions in such a way that they feel far further detached from the physical world and far closer to the mystical. Yeah, so that um, actually didn't make me hallucinate. It was just extraordinary pain. So how else can you separate yourself from the physical world without the use of drugs? Well, you could always try a sensory deprivation chamber. Anechoic chambers are rooms that almost completely absorb sound, eliminating all reverberations. Welcome to the anecho. This is, this is very strange. So everything around you, all these foam wedges, and there's ones on the floor, though they're under a net so you can't see them, they absorb sound. So every, normally when you listen to me, you get the sound direct from me, and you get the reflections from the wall. But as soon as we put this in, you get no reflection. So if I actually turn away from the camera, I'll actually be quite a lot quieter because the sound is disappearing. Now for most of our lives, we're constantly experiencing huge amounts of ambient noise. So the sensation of being inside one of these rooms can be extremely disturbing and cause hallucinations. Yeah, there was a paper by UCL which showed that you could, if you, with the right people who are prone to it, if you turn the lights off in Anaco, leave people in it, they will hallucinate. But for most people, it doesn't happen. And if you're like me working it, it certainly doesn't happen when you've got all the lights on. So I'm afraid it's not something I've experienced. Now I wasn't sure whether I classified as prone to hallucinations, but I figured that 30 minutes blindfolded in the chamber will be enough to find out. See if I hallucinate. <sighs> 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 
Now other forms of sensory deprivation can be a tad more pleasant than this. Take sensory deprivation tanks. Designed by John C. Lilly, himself a big fan of LSD, this technology is used for something called restricted environmental stimulation therapy, where you float in salt water inside a soundproof bathtub. An evidently nicer experience than anechoic chambers. Well, I'm not hallucinating yet. It just sort of feels like being dead. I also have no idea how long I've been in there for. Research suggests that time in sensory deprivation tanks, despite a propensity to cause hallucinations, can carry a multitude of mental health benefits. This might seem odd, but in the world of science, psychedelics are being used for much the same reason, as a treatment for mental illness. I still feel like, I don't feel, I don't feel uh, creeped out. Though when I say creeped out, I start trying to creep myself out and imagine like the girl from The Exorcist being right there. I don't like that. Ongoing clinical trials at Imperial College London have found that psilocybin, the active compound in magic mushrooms, shows real promise in treating depression. In the trials, severely depressed adults received doses of the drug during hallucinatory psychotherapy, and results showed that the drug not only outperformed existing antidepressants, but could also serve as a more permanent treatment, with over half of the participants experiencing a remission from their depressive symptoms six weeks later. Well, maybe it's just been like five minutes. F me, if it's been that five minutes. Uh. Yeah. Oh, didn't like that. <laughs> Woo -hoo. I can't believe I just scared myself <laughs> with my own noise. I don't like it when I'm very loud, though. Despite the groundbreaking results of Imperial College London's trials, scientists attempting to investigate the medical use of psychedelics face a lot of red tape from boring people in suits. The Western world's war on drugs slaps psychedelics like magic mushrooms in the same boat as heroin and crack, and as a result of this, we're limited from understanding their full potential via academic studies. I wouldn't say I'm hallucinating, but then maybe I'll watch this footage back and think, wow, he looks f***ing mental. I'm mellowing into it. You know, it must have been about, let's say, eight minutes by now. Psychedelics actually differ from harder drugs in many ways. For a start, they're not addictive, and fatal overdoses are pretty much unheard of. In fact, the 2016 Global Drug Survey found that magic mushrooms were the safest recreational drug, even more so than cannabis. It's as early I thought I, I could have sworn I heard a noise. I feel more comfortable with this side of the room than that side of the room, which just seems ever so malignant to me at the moment. But of course this isn't to say that psychedelics are completely safe. Hallucinatory drugs can have devastating effects on people with previously undiagnosed mental conditions like schizophrenia, and their abuse can lead to a variety of psychoses. It's also worth pointing out that medical studies like Imperial College London's are undertaken in controlled settings that scientists are keen to elucidate should not be replicated at home. So if you want to experience a form of psychotherapy that involves being off your face, it's probably best to hop in a sensory deprivation tank. As for the anechoic chambers... Ugh. Ah! Whoa, f me! Jesus Christ! <laughs> you scared the out of me! <laughs> but let's imagine you're not a fan of dark enclosed spaces, and the idea of possibly hospitalising yourself through a chilli pepper overdose is unappealing. Well, there is one last method of at-home hallucination that might ruffle your truffle. Eye gazing. Yes, literally staring into someone's eyes for more than 10 minutes can alter consciousness and induce hallucinations and dissociation. An Italian psychologist found in 2015 that the most common hallucinations involve people seeing their partner's face become deformed, morph into their own face, or morph into their relative's face. And in some cases, the experience can result in a severe rush of love and attraction. Now, as a prudish male, this last point concerned me, so I enlisted the help of my brother George right, to give it a whirl. Let's do this, let's do this. Okay. Uh, right. All good? Okay. And go. Unfortunately, this didn't quite go to plan. I realised I required someone I couldn't possibly be attracted to. Thankfully, my producer happened to be in the same room, so I asked him to join me. So let's move on to the big question. How do psychedelics affect your brain? Well, the visual effects are normally caused by messages sent to your serotonin receptors, parts of your brain responsible for your senses. When psychedelics interact with these receptors, images that you wouldn't usually perceive become real. But here's where things get interesting. These images aren't manufactured out of nowhere. You're just perceiving reality in a different way. Your senses might get mixed up to the extent that you hear colors or taste sound, but who's to say you're perceiving a less true version of the world? You smell good. Be quiet. It's easy to think that the altered mental states psychedelics provoke are just absurd detachments from reality, but this isn't always the case. 
case, psychedelics actually connect the networks in your brain, allowing for a deeper level of emotion and introspection. To a sober person, some of these thoughts might sound crazy, but maybe crazy is just relative to normality. I'm just going to shuffle forward towards you. No, you're not. Back in the day, the US government was hopeful that LSD could be a useful mind control drug that could help with lots of their favorite things, like interrogating minorities. Unfortunately for them, it actually became a symbol of hippie counterculture and anti-war sentiment, with LSD users distancing themselves from traditional thought and turning against their nation. When Nixon declared drug use public enemy number one, citing psychedelics as making people crazy, today scientists believe they could be an instrumental at all in actually making people more sane. Stop it. Maybe when we think about hallucinatory experiences, we're thinking about them the wrong way. Just staring into someone's eyes for 10 minutes can send psychodynamic projections of your own subconscious into someone else's face, and if that doesn't tell you that we're tripping all the time, I don't know what will. Seriously, you need to stop. Every second of your life, your brain is filling in the blind spot in your eye, where your optic nerve connects to your retina. A small portion of your vision is constantly manufactured by your own mind. What you're seeing there is not real. Every time you remember something, your brain networks alter in ways that can change how you recall the memory. Your past experiences are not solidified. They change each time you remember them, depending on the present. Stare at the edges of this image and watch it spin. It's not spinning. You're an idiot, and your brain is constantly lying to you. The truth is that we all live in a constant hallucination, creating our own realities in every single moment of our lives. It doesn't matter whether you're sober, or tripping out of a shaman, or trying not to poo yourself after some regrettably hot chili peppers. You're still inside your head, and you'll never be out of it. God. What's happened? You look about a thousand years old. I'm a fair bit older than you as well. Like your face looks like madly contorted and that like mushy. Who else is gonna have a scenario? <laughs> That's a joking. How <laughs> knew you were gonna do some like that.